I'm Helen Colebrook from Journal With Purpose and I'm really excited to be back filming another video for Colt Pens. What I'm going to be talking about today is doing a little end of year reflective journaling. Now if you follow me on YouTube or Instagram, you'll know that I absolutely love using my journals for planning. And the journals that I use are typically the Rhodia Goal Books and they have dotted paper. And I use these to fill out kind of project plans, all the tasks that I want to achieve, deadlines I've got coming up, followed by all of the different tasks which fall into all of the different categories and projects that I'm working on. And this really, really helps to keep me organised, on track and making sure that I don't forget anything that I decided I really wanted to work on throughout the year. And one of the very first things I do at the beginning of every year is create a vision board of what I would like to achieve. And I do this in a really simple way. I find some photos, perhaps either Google images, Pinterest, anything like that, and print out ones that I feel really help to show me in a visual way the different things that I want to achieve and how I want my life to feel. So this is the vision board that I set up for 2021 and it really helps to keep me on track. I also always pick a word for the year and my word for 2021 was resilient and I've already decided that for 2022 I want it to be refined. I want to start really looking at everything I'm doing and fine tuning it. And I wanted to show you these first to give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing today, kind of what it leads on to. Because before I start my planning for the new year and setting out all the tasks that I'm going to need to complete to achieve those goals, I like to spend a little bit of time reflecting in my journal. And I think that's so important because it really helps you to think about what's gone well, what hasn't, what do you really want to get rather than straight away jumping into things that perhaps you think you want to work on. So that's what I'm going to be doing today is doing some reflective journaling because there are four questions that I like to ask myself towards the end of every year. I always like to add some decoration to my journal pages because I find that for me it makes them more inviting. You can absolutely miss out this step entirely but I just find it's definitely sort of a personal choice but I love to see something that's got some decorations on it particularly if I've got loads of tasks, I'm in a really busy period I kind of find my page looks less daunting if it's got some pretty decorations on it. So I'm starting off by just adding two strips of washi tape and this is MT brand and it's just paper Japanese tape. It's less sticky than sellotape so you can pick it up and remove it. And I just love adding it to the edge of my pages. Another good reason for doing this is it actually helps to kind of categorize your pages. So if you wanted to have some pages that were all to do with a certain project, it could be a work project or hobby perhaps that you want to plan out in your journals and then reflect on. If you use the same color washi tape for all of the pages you do in that category, when you look back through your journals, it's much easier to find. So I'm starting off just by adding a strip down at both sides and then I'm just cutting it around the corners. I find the Rhodia paper is really good for a wide range of pens and mediums and that's why it's the one that I've been using now for many, many years. And I love to stay organised and on top of everything but most importantly, I like to make sure I'm not just doing things that I have to do, but I'm taking time to really think about the things that I want to do personally throughout that year. And they could be work related goals or anything to do with health, well-being, things around the home, places I'd like to see, anything like that. 
So I mentioned that I'm going to be asking four questions and please feel free to use exactly the same ones as me or come up with some that feel right to you. So for the first question I'm going to write it out here and for this I'm going to be using a Tombow Fudonosuke brush pen with a firm nib. It's one of my absolute favourite brush pens but absolutely any pen would be fine for this. So I'm starting with a really kind of open and wide question and I do this on purpose because I don't always know quite what's going to come up. So just how has this year been? So I'm going to take a little bit of time to think about quite a few different areas of my life and just write in really loose terms about how kind of the 2021 year has been for me. So that's my first set of reflections done. And as I said, I've kept it kind of nice and general. So I've just written for me, considering how unsettled the world has been, 2021 has been a pretty good year for me. I've grown in lots of ways, worked on some great projects and I'm, pr and I'm proud of what I've achieved. There have been lots of health worries amongst friends and family, but hopefully we're over the worst of that now. I'm feeling pretty tired as it's been such a busy year without many breaks, but I've also had a lot of fun along the way. So it's just a really nice kind of snapshot of how the year has been. Now I mentioned I love adding creative elements to my journals. So because I'm about to move on to the second question, I want to draw kind of a little divider across my page. So I'm gonna just add a nice, simple wavy line. And I'm using a Sakura Pigma Micron Pen in size one. And this has got archival ink in it. I know that it's waterproof, which I love. And because I want to add a little bit of paint over the top, this will be a perfect pen for that. And along here, I'm going to add some really simple leaves. So a lot of the decorations I add to my journal pages don't take very long to do at all. And so their only purpose for me is to encourage me to keep using my journals. And I find adding anything creative really relaxing. So if I'm doing something like reflective journaling, I find that adding a few doodles, maybe a little bit of painting or using my colored pencils, it just helps to, I guess, activate a different part of my mind. And rather than worrying about maybe all the emails that have come in this morning that I haven't replied to or deadlines that I've got coming up, I can just lose myself and relax for a little while in the process of adding, say, some doodles or anything I fancy. I also like using stickers, stamping, stenciling, and they certainly don't take very long at all. So anything which just adds perhaps a little bit of personality to my journal and makes it something all of my own. And I'm also gonna add, I think, another little leaf up here. And I'm gonna add color to these right at the end. So I'm now going to move on to my second question. And so for this second section, I've written out what were my biggest achievements? And this is where I think it's time to give yourself a bit of a pat on the back. 
and it's worth taking a little bit of time and just thinking about the different things that you've done because sometimes I think it's so easy to get bogged down in the things we don't feel we've done very well at and when you've then got a whole year to look back over, I feel confident there'll be some things in there that actually you're really, really proud of, even if you haven't taken the time to recognise it yet. Okay, so that's my second section now completed. And again, I think I might add another little leaf somewhere along the bottom here. And I've been lucky enough to work on some really great things throughout 2021 and over the last couple of years in general, and all of those without exception, started off as ideas in my journals when I spent time to think about what I really wanted to do, what was working for me in life, what wasn't, and what little steps I might need to take to start moving towards things that would just make me feel happier and more fulfilled. So I can never say enough about the process of keeping a journal and taking time to really think about what's important to you rather than just rushing from day to day, the tasks that come to you, whether you're employed, whatever you're doing, and taking some time to do things which are really good for you. So I'm now gonna move on to my third question. So the next area I'm going to focus on is what things I would like to improve. And I think that's a far kinder way of looking at it than perhaps what didn't go well. Certainly you know, avoiding anything which has negative connotations. It's really just thinking about things that you know perhaps didn't quite go to plan, but you really want to work on improving. Okay, so I've spent a few moments just thinking about what areas of my life I would like to improve. And for me, a lot of that's about scheduling in time for breaks, because I work for myself, I think I'm not very good at that at all. And I've got a few other things that I felt didn't go as well as I'd have liked this year. And I think I pretty much know the reason for all of those things, because probably other areas went even better than I could have imagined. So I spent more time on those things, which I don't regret at all, but it means that certain things definitely kind of slipped by the wayside for me in 2021. And that's why I think it's so important to do a little bit of reflecting before setting up your goals for next year. And one of the things I like to do is look back at the goals that I set for this year and think about with the ones I didn't achieve, why was that? Was it because I didn't give them enough priority? Is it because of things that I couldn't have controlled? Or is it perhaps because it, was, it ended up being really not that important to me? Because one thing I do know is if something's really important to me, I make the time for it. So, and that can quite often be the reason, a goal that I set at the beginning of the year, perhaps within a few months it isn't something that I'm that interested in anymore and that's absolutely fine but rather than then writing the same goal again for this year taking a little bit of time to reflect makes me think about kind of what's still important to me have my priorities changed at all which things most excite me to work on and it could be that some of the things I haven't achieved because I don't feel yet that I've got perhaps the skills or confidence to do them. And in which case I need to break that goal down a little bit further, perhaps break it into lots of smaller sections so it feels something I, it's something that I can tackle this year. So 
So for our very final section, we're gonna start focusing on next year. So what is it you would like to achieve during 2022? Okay, so that is the journaling part done. And I mentioned I would like to add some colour to my leaves. And for this, I'm going to use the Derwent Pastel Shades Paint Pan Set. I think they're also called kind of a gouache set, though most sort of gouache comes in tubes, but it definitely has a kind of gouache look to it. And I find that this works really nicely, even on thin paper. This set does come with a travel brush, but I'm actually gonna just use um, some water in a jar with a brush, just cause I tend to save that for when I am actually out and about. And I think I'm just gonna go for a really nice cornflower blue. I never worry about whether things are realistic about having blue leaves in my journals. For me, that's fine because it's going to tie in with the colours of the washi tape that I've used. So I'm just going to really simply add this with inside my leaf shapes. And it also gives me a chance to talk while I'm doing this a little bit more about kind of what to do next when you've done your reflective journaling. So I showed you right back at the beginning of the video my vision board pages. So one of the things I would now I will be doing within the next couple of days probably is looking at this section of what it is I'd like to achieve next year along with what I'd like to improve and create another vision board and I do think picking a word for the year can be really useful so if there's a common theme perhaps in the things that you want to improve on or achieve next year it might be worth picking you know, something that ties in with that so as I mentioned, my word for 2022 will be refine. And I think partly the reason why I've struggled with taking breaks and getting the right balance is I get excited and go from one project to the next to the next, which is good in one way, but it also means that I can be a bit haphazard in my approach to things and there's some bits and bobs that I really want to look at, kind of get clearer on, and I want to spend a bit of time on my blog and making sure that works as well as it can, and looking at everything that I offer work-wise, but also looking at my personal life and you know, what I can do there to refine certain areas of it. So I think having that one word will really help to keep me on track. And once I've got my vision board, I will then get clearer on exactly where I want to be 12 months from now. So this, what do I want to achieve? Some of that's still quite loose at the moment. And I will do a, in 12 months from now, what do I, where do I want to be? What do I want to have done? And that will give me a lot more of kind of a solid focus. And from there, I then tend to break that down into where do I want to be six months from now, three months from now, and what do I want to achieve over the next month? And that's so, so helpful because then those things where I say, this is what I want to achieve over the next month, all those planning pages I showed you right at the beginning of this video with all of the tasks and things, that's where all of the actions will then get planned out in my journal. So rather than it just being something say like New Year's resolutions, I want to be fitter, I want to lose so much weight, anything like that, it, they will become proper plans within my journals where I will set myself deadlines for working on those things. And when I've got a big goal that I want to 
work on. So one of the things I have put here is release another six online classes. So if I think on average, if I want to spread them out reasonably evenly across the year for my workload, so that's one every two months, and I then will start working backwards from there. So probably at least one month before the class is released, I need to have got a really good idea of all of the content that's gonna be involved. So probably the month before that, I need to have done a brainstorming session on what different class ideas could be, perhaps doing a little research and looking back through questions that I've been asked from people where they've, and see if there's any common themes there that might be a good idea to pick a class on. So it's probably two months before I release the class that I need to have started doing some work on it. And then once I've got my class topic, kind of planning out all of the outline and then blocking in some days for filming and then for photo editing and things like that. So it's really worth breaking any goals down into the smallest, smallest tasks and giving them a deadline particularly when they're things you want to do rather than things you have to do. Because if they're things you have to do, you, it often tends to be that somebody else has set a deadline for you. But so for things that you want to achieve for yourself, I think it's really, really important to set yourself some deadlines for those things and say tiny, tiny tasks, the smaller that you can break them down, particularly if you're trying to do things alongside an already very busy schedule. So I'll try and break down things into tasks that maybe could be 20 minutes, half an hour long, so that if I've got a bit of spare time at some point during the day or the week, I can put just a little bit of time at least to moving certain things forwards. So this is the start for me always, the reflections and learning from the past year, what I enjoyed, what worked, what didn't and then hopefully putting some really nice, solid and hopefully exciting plans in place for the year ahead. Well, I really hope you've found that helpful and I hope it's gonna give you some ideas for your own journals too and get you inspired to start thinking about how this year's been and planning for next year too. And whilst I'm here, I also wanted to mention that one of my big achievements I wrote for this year was having my second book published. So if you are interested in journaling at all, I have two books out. They're both stocked by Colt Pens. My very first book, Journal with Purpose, was out a couple of years ago, and this is all about different decorative elements. So if you're into creative journaling and you like the thought of adding like the little leaves like I did and flowers, this book is full of lots of different ideas of things that you can kind of copy along with and pick some themes for your own journals. And my book, which was released this year, Layout Ideas 101, has got lots of journal layouts and writing prompts in here. So things on all different categories, so reflective journaling, looking at daily planning, lots of ideas for how you might want to lay things out the week ahead. And I've used lots of decorative elements from the first book. And then at the end of every chapter in here, there's also lots of writing prompts as well. So if you're somebody who perhaps wants to keep a journal but struggles with things to write about, hopefully these give you a really good kind of starting point to get you thinking along different lines and the kinds of topics you could write about in your journals. So I thought I just had to <laughs> mention those whilst I was here. So yeah, I really, really hope you've enjoyed that. If you do decide to create some end of year reflection journaling pages, please do share them. And if you're on Instagram, tag in Colt Pens and myself, Helen. I'm at Journal With Purpose on Instagram. I would absolutely love to see how you get on with them. Thank you ever so much for watching.